Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Parade. I am back from my vacation. Well, technically, I still have a few days left of my actual full vacation before I have to go back to work. But I am back on YouTube from my vacation uh, from YouTube. Uh, yes, I have had a friend visiting from uh, California for the last eight days. He left yesterday morning. Had a whole lot of fun with him. I hadn't seen him in like six years. So it was a lot of fun to, you know, visit with him. And I mean, we talk on the phone all the time, of course. But just to have him visiting and catching up. Watched movies and TV shows and stuff that we've been wanting to watch together and all that sort of stuff. So it was a whole lot of fun. And... Uh, we also got out and about for a while. I've seen more of Oregon in the last eight days than I've probably seen in the past ten years uh, before that. So yeah, it was a whole lot of fun. Went to a lot of different places. We went up to Astoria in the northwest corner of the state to see, uh, mainly to see the sights from the movie The Goonies. It's one of our favorites from uh, when I was growing up. Uh, we of course had to hit Portland as well. We visited Powell's City of Books, that great big bookstore in downtown Portland that I've shown you uh, once or twice. and. Uh, I got a few books. Uh, the only music-related book I got was actually kind of a cool thing. Uh, it's called Stats, Records, and Rock and Roll. It is a book of uh, music information in the form of infographics. Kind of cool. Uh, it's, 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 I love browsing these kinds of books. I actually got one on one of my previous visits. It is a smaller format uh, thing with you know of the same concept. Different information in both of these books. But uh, yeah, now I have a full-size companion to go with the... Uh, uh, smaller sized uh, book that I'd gotten previously. So yeah, got to f I actually found more than I expected to find at Powell's. I've uh, got books of different uh, subjects as well. Got a Star Trek book that I had been waiting and waiting for the price to go down on. So I got it for like half of what was originally the cover price, even though it's still sealed. So yay. And then after Portland, we went to the central Oregon city of Bend, which is very nice, very pretty, very picturesque. I'd never been there before, so it was uh, new to me to see that town. And of course, there was all the beautiful scenery and all the small little towns uh, along the way between home and those other destinations. It was just a bunch of beautiful car rides. I'm not really, really big on long car rides, but we certainly have the scenery. It keeps you from getting bored up here in Oregon. Uh, but yeah, you had a, as I said, I had a wonderful, wonderful time. And as a special bonus icing on the cake, so to speak, I got to check out a handful of record stores. Uh, with uh, with my friend's generosity he's not nearly as big into music as i am i mean who is pretty much but uh yeah he kind of had patience with me i was able to uh, browse record stores but i mean he was looking for some jazz cds also so he wasn't totally bored but uh yeah uh, pretty much everywhere i went i was able to visit at least one record store uh, a couple stores I'd been to before, of course, but also I visited two that I had never been to before. Uh, one of them I knew about beforehand, and the other one, actually, uh, I had no clue about it until we were passing by it on the road, and uh, we took a quick little uh, turn around the block so we could hit it. So it was a whole lot of fun. I thought I would show you a few of the goodies that I got at each of the stores, uh, since this is a music channel, not a travel channel. So. Uh, but anyway, we went to the FYE store up, up in Salem, Oregon, which is, I believe, the largest in Oregon. They've got much more video than they have music, but uh, found a couple of good deals. Uh, Bobby Darren, a two-disc compilation of Bobby Darren. It, this thing normally goes for like 17, 18 bucks retail. As you can see with the, by the price tag, I got it for $3.99. So darn good deal. New and sealed, you know, not used. And another new and sealed CD I got was a Tom Petty's Full Moon Fever, Fever for five bucks, originally $17.99. As is one of the uh, downsides with FYE, they tend to um, overshoot their retail prices. But anyway, uh, that aside, uh, one of the stores, the store that I just mentioned that I did not know about until we passed by it on the street, is a cute little store in Astoria called Bach and Rock. And uh, I didn't spend, get to spend a whole lot of time in there. It was, uh, you know, we were on our way to somewhere else, so... Uh, but I did find one thing kind of cool. It's, it's not technically music, but it is a CD set. It is The Complete 2,000-Year-Old Man. Uh, check this routine out. It's a routine by Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks that they launched in, I think, the 60s. Uh, very funny if, if you... You know, if you, if you like sketch-based comedy, that kind of stuff, check it out. But yeah, this was uh, all four albums from the 2,000-Year-Old Man franchise, I guess you'd call it, uh, routine that they did. 
and I got it for 25 bucks. Uh, I thought at the at the time I saw it, it looked like it must be a really good deal because I I never see this box set uh, in stores anymore. Uh, then especially as good a condition as the CDs were themselves, they were pretty pretty much spotless. Uh, I did find out later on though that it was uh, per, well pretty much a competitive price. It wasn't overpriced. The lowest priced new or like new example I saw on Amazon's third party uh, you know aftermarket was thirty dollars. So I mean hey I got it for twenty five so pretty good. And yeah from what I saw in that store uh, he had a pretty good selection of stuff. Uh, a whole bunch of CDs, mostly CDs, but he also had plenty of records and cassettes as well. And the thing was, though, uh, everything was behind locked cabinets. Uh, at least all the CDs and DVDs were. So you know, you couldn't. You could look at what was in the cabinets, but you couldn't actually take it out and inspect it until you got the uh, store manager to come and un uh, unlock the cabinet. Uh, no, there was nothing below ten dollars basically in the CDs. And the thing is, since everything was behind a uh, locked case, you couldn't see what was new and what was used. So, and yeah, of course, you know, $10 for a used CD is a little bit high. And there wasn't anything, at least, as I said, I couldn't take a really good look at, at everything they had. I, I was uh, short on time. But I didn't see anything that was particularly rare or, or, you know, hard to find. So, yeah, judging, you know, by that cursory glance, things looked like they might have been a little overpriced at that store. But as I said, I didn't take a really good, good close look because used CDs really shouldn't be more than $8 at most, honestly. So, but... Anyway, I would totally be open to going back to that store and checking stuff out uh, in, uh, with more time on my hands. I would love to see what they have. They may have some really good bargains there. Who knows? But anyway, and also he, apparently he had a dog, which uh, I, I didn't know about uh, until after my, my friend mentioned it after we had left. And heck, if I'd known he had a dog, that would have been more reason to stay. So it's probably a good thing he didn't mention until after we left that he had a dog. So, uh, but yeah, a nice cozy little store, I have to say. Uh, the product uh, I would have to take a closer look at, as I said, to see if it was really a good store worth going to for the price conscious, the money conscious. But uh, yeah, a very, very charming store, a lot of, lot of atmosphere in there. So, uh, and, and the guy at the store was nice. Very nice guy, very nice uh, uh, personable staff there. <laughs> a staff of one, but anyway. So, and then the next stop, uh, basically, in terms of record stores anyway, was uh, Music Millennium in Portland. I loved, I love that store. As I've said before, it's my favorite store in the Portland area. And I got a few things, a couple of which I can't mention yet. I will be mentioning them in uh, future soon-to-appear videos. But uh, the things that I did get that I can mention here are actually no fewer than four Joe Satriani CDs. I, as I've, you've probably hinted recently, I've become a bit of a fan of Joe Satriani, so found uh, four of them. Uh, Super Colossal, Crystal Planet, uh, Strange Beautiful Music, and Engines of Creation. So yeah, I've got a nice little stockpile of Joe Satriani CDs to listen to. That guy is just a killer rock guitarist. Uh, most of his stuff, as I've mentioned, is instrumental. So if you like instrumental guitar rock, you pretty much can't go wrong with Joe Satriani. And then, of course, my other stop, which is pretty much mandatory every time I go to Portland, is Everyday Music. We went to the downtown location, which was uh, just a couple blocks down from Powell's, and found a couple cool things. Uh, there's a jazz fusion group from that started in, I believe, the 70s called Weather Report. And this is their uh, best-known album, Heavy Weather. Decided to give that a listen. It's their uh, a remastered edition with any bonus tracks. I'm not sure if there are bonus tracks on and uh, Jonathan Brooke, her most recent studio album, which I didn't realize was out. Uh, it actually came out in 2016. That tells you how much, uh, how close tabs I keep on Jonathan Brooke. And then um, Howie Day's debut album, Australia. I have uh, his second and third album, so I thought I'd pick that up. And for, for two and a half bucks, can't really beat that. And then I am happy to report that I have uh, filled the last gap in my Weezer discography. I found Maladroite for uh, seven bucks. So yeah, a uh, good... A little bit of shopping there at Everyday Music. And then uh, the last record store I went to was the one out in Bend, Oregon. It's called Ranch Records. Uh, I knew about this one beforehand, but I had never gotten a chance to go in there. And it really, really impressed me. That is a great store. And actually, I found out in talking with, uh, I'm not sure if he was the manager or not, but one of the staff, very, very friendly staff in that store. I mean, I don't know if, about you, but sometimes just when I go into a record store or sometimes another kind of store, I just get a good vibe when I go in there. That was this kind of store. I mean, as soon as I went in there, it just felt felt welcoming and warm. 
and uh, the staff certainly helped in that department. Uh, but anyway, uh, got in getting sidetracked, I found out from the gentleman that I talked to that he had actually bought some of the record racks from Skip when Skip was going out of business. Uh, so yeah, a little piece of Skip's is in uh, Ranch Records, which might be one of the uh, reasons, possibly a uh, subliminal reason or subconscious reason why I felt so comfortable in there. So, But yeah, they have a great selection of stuff, uh, lots of CDs, lots of records, uh, certainly not as big as the stores in Portland or as big as uh, Skip's Records and CD World was, but hey, it's, it's almost worth the drive to Bend just to, for that record store. And there is one other record store in Bend that I did not get a chance to go into. Uh, I didn't want to test my friend's patience. Uh, so, but yet, yeah, and that'll give me an excuse to go back to Bend to uh, see that other record store. And I, I have absolutely no hesitation to revisit Ranch, R Ranch Records. It's a great store, but uh, yeah, I got a few things there. Uh, the CD single of Big Yellow Taxi by Counting Crows and Vanessa Carlton. Sorry to say, but that is just about the only song by Counting Crows that I really, really like. Uh, and like enough to have a CD copy of, so I found the single. And it's got a couple of a couple of live tracks on there, and, and I think a remix of Big Yellow Taxi. So yeah, that was definitely nice to get. And I got another Elton John CD. This one is uh, 21 at 33, so uh, one that I did not have. That uh, brings my Elton John library up to 14, 15 CDs, I think, of his. And then the soundtrack to High Fidelity, one of my favorite music-related movies. If you have not seen High Fidelity, you've got to see it. It's great. Yeah, a bunch of cool tracks on that. And then uh, Jimmy Fallon's first album, The Bathroom Wall. I have his uh, most recent album, uh, Blow Your Pants Off, I think is the name of it. Uh, and I really, really got a kick out of that one. So I found this one, picked it up. And yes, and yes, so far he's only done those two albums. Uh, and they're separated by, what, 10 years? He did those two albums 10 years apart. And then uh, The Essential Bangles. I'd been looking for this one for quite a while, and uh, for several years, and finally found it there for seven bucks. So yeah, I came home with a pretty darn good selection of CDs, some that I had been looking for, some that I'd had on my mental wish list for a while, and some that I didn't know I wanted until I picked them up, and especially for the prices that I got them for. Uh, so excellent uh, shopping experiences, uh, along with all the sightseeing and all that stuff. So uh, yeah, I've had probably the most fun week in quite a while that I've had. Uh, probably spent a little bit more money than I should have, but hey, you only live once, right? Right. But anyway, uh, so yeah, that recaps my vacation, and I thought I would cap this video off with a little special treat for you. Uh, something a little unusual. I'm going to be opening a package that I got in the mail, a CD that I ordered, and a little bit of backstory here for you. Um, I had found this CD, uh, four disc set, uh, Back to the 80s, The Long Versions, Volume 2, and I'm pretty sure I found this one at Skip's uh, many years ago. It's probably 15 years ago, probably more than that, actually. And, of course, I had been, you know, since this is Volume 2, I'd kind of been looking off and on for Volume 1 for these last 15 years. More off than on, you know, I haven't been feverishly trying to find it, you know, every month or every week since then. You know, I would, when I think of it and when money allowed, I would go on look, looking for it. But just about every time I found it, it was either in poor condition or it was very expensive, more expensive than I was willing to uh, fork over for it. Finally, on a whim, a couple of months ago, I was looking at Discogs.com, and I, I didn't realize, actually, that they have a retail store, you know, a, a web store. Uh, it, it works kind of like eBay, where, you know, and, and the Amazon uh, marketplace, where it's third-party sellers, you just go through the website, essentially. So, and I found a uh, what was purported to be a like-new copy of The Long Versions Volume 1, uh, for uh, $20 postage paid, and it came from the Ukraine, and so I decided to go ahead and order it, and a very friendly seller, by the way. Uh, the thing is, uh, it came from the Ukraine, and it took two months for me to get it, and so I don't know how he sent it, or, or you know, what took, what took it so long to get here. We actually had to put in an inquiry in with the post office to see if they could track the package, because, you know, tracking showed it uh, being processed through the Ukraine on July 22nd, and nothing for, like, six weeks after that. So, but anyway, long convoluted story. I finally got it in the mail yesterday, but I just decided since I'd been looking so long for it, uh, and I finally, finally arrived after, you know, 15 years, as I said, of pining for the CD and two months of waiting for it to arrive, arrive in the mail, I thought I would share with you the moment of actually opening the package uh, right here on my channel. So you will get my genuine reaction. I just kind of, I want to share this with you guys. Just just because I can, you know, right? Uh, if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I wouldn't be able to share these special moments with y'all. 
So let's open this thing live on screen. I have no idea if the condition of the CD is acceptable to me or if it is in fact the CD that I ordered. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, there, there's you know margin for human error. It could, uh, you know, people make mistakes, which, you know, hopefully this is not a mistake since it took so agonizingly long for me to get the package. And it's taking me agonizingly long to open the package, apparently, but, uh, okay. And it's, oh, he packaged it well. It is pretty much entirely cocooned in cellophane tape. So, of course, uh, Noah has experience with uh, well-sealed packages. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's open this bad boy up here. Very glad I brought the scissors with me, otherwise this video would be an hour and a half long. So, it's, okay. I might be fast forwarding the video through here, uh, just so you do it, guys. You'll get ridiculously bored. Okay. According to the spine, it is the CD that I was looking for, in fact. Let's see here. Yes. Back to the 80s, the long versions. And it is indeed volume one. Four discs. The case looks a little battered, so hopefully the CDs are in acceptable condition. Oh, yeah, that one looks good. I can be pretty anal about the condition of my CDs, so uh, you will find me looking at used CDs at the stores before I buy them just to make sure that the discs are not all scratched up. I have been burned once or twice for that. Yeah, these discs look pretty good so far. That's why I didn't hear any rattling in when I shook the bag, was because they had uh, bubble wrap uh, cushioning the CDs, which was very, very considerate of him. Yeah, these discs are very, very good condition. Now, there's a small radial scratch on that one, but it doesn't look like it's too bad. So this is awesome. Back to the 80s, the long versions of Volume 1. I finally have it to go along with Volume 2, which I've had for 15 years. It finally has its companion volume to uh, keep it company on my CD shelf. So thank you so much, Vladimir. You will probably not see this video, but I'm thanking you anyway. A long sought after CD set finally in my collection after probably closer to 20 years I've been waiting to get my hands on it. So, anyway, yes, I just wanted to share that with you guys just because it was such an important acquisition for me to get. Uh, I thought I would share my, my joy and a genuine, actual live reaction to opening a package for you guys. That is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate the feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel, or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well, and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find the link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers' channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.